at East Soldiers. Is it like 25 degrees outside? Yes. Am I still drinking a hot beverage? Also yes. The paleo diet. Isn't that what killed the dinosaurs? This mug is a Chekhov's gun. Keep that in mind. Wait, I am using that correctly. Hold on. Fact check. Ah, I'm in fact using that correctly. Wonderful. My inner English major didn't let me down. As you can see, um, I'm filling up my body pretty fast with some inky art. Also got a couple of new ones lately that I posted on my Instagram and on my TikTok. And tattoos are just fun to talk about. So I thought we would just do a full tattoo tour today. A lot of my tattoos are bookish or book related. Uh, Shocker, but some of them are purely aesthetic, which brings me into my disclaimer before I start this video. Yes, tattoos are expensive, as are books, and I make my own money, and I will be spending my hard-earned money on whatever I want. And in this case, I am spending it, uh, I'm investing in art. So you can spend your money on whatever you want to, but I will be continuing to spend my money on getting dinosaurs inked onto my skin. In any case, art is subjective and I love all my tattoos and I don't really care if you don't like them because guess what? They're on my body and I gotta see them every day. I just think tattoos are really cool and I love the way that they look on people regardless of like how deep or meaningful they are. Like I know some people are very much so like every tattoo I have is a deep symbolic meaning to me and my family and some people are like oh yeah I lost a bet so I got someone to tattoo Bart Simpson as Mona Lisa on my leg. <laughs> You're like all right man you do you. Also because I've tried to film this before it's very awkward trying to show off things at this height and camera angle, so I'll probably be inserting some clips of just like nicer, more aesthetic shots. All right, so the first one is one that you can pretty much see in almost everything, uh, and that is my shoulder tattoo. So let's just take this off and uh, I'll show off my floral sleeve. So I got this sleeve done in three parts. I first got this middle section, uh, these two roses, done uh, in February of 2020. I then got my shoulder piece here in August of 2020, and then I got my final piece here in December of 2020. I got a rose sleeve because roses were my grandmother's favorite flower, and I am the pale English rose that you hear about in all those Victorian novels, due only to the fact of mutated genetics and me never going out in the sun. The bottom piece here also has my raven skull, which I have named, actually that's something I've named <laughs> all of the creatures that are on my body. And this one is named Moore after the Morrigan. So this full sleeve was completed uh, in the end of last year. And then at the beginning of this year, I went in again to my artist, her name is Olivia, to get this touched up because I thickened up some of the vines on my collarbone. I like added some more along the sides here. And I also added this quote, be afraid and happy is one of my all time favorite quotes from the Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. If you know the context of it, it's when Henry says to Gansey, if you cannot be unafraid, be afraid and happy. And it's just like the idea of like, you can't go through your life constantly in fear of something. You have to also like allow yourself to be happy, like seek out those things too. And it's like when I first read it, even now, every single time I re-listen to the audiobook or read the actual series, I get chills. Like I just, oh, it means so much to me. I love that I have it on my body now. So I guess we'll just stick with this arm as well, uh, because on this forearm I have actually what is my very first tattoo. This is my ambigram tattoo, and I'm going to blow your mind for a second. So if you look at it this way, it says fantasy, but if you look at it this way, it says reality. There's a mind fuck for all of you this morning. <laughs> this was my very first tattoo. I got this for my 24th birthday. Um, I'm 26 now, which means that all of my bodily art has been done in the last two years. <laughs> but I specifically got this tattoo as my first tattoo because I remember when I was in my early teens, I heard somebody say, if you want a tattoo, you have to want it for a really long time. And I remember seeing this on like pre-Bronze Age Tumblr <laughs> and loving it so much, thinking it was so cool. And I remember printing it out and sticking it on my computer I have that sticker on there for like close to a decade just looking at it and being like do I really want this and yes I do fantasy and reading and books and other worlds are such a big part of my life that I love that there is that flip side of fantasy and reality I would also say oddly enough this is one of the ones that hurt the most uh, mostly because at the time my tattoo artist was still an apprentice, so I don't think that she had like gotten her style yet um, so it wasn't super fun but like I guess I didn't mind it because I'm super ink, so like whatever. Also hot tip, a lot of people say for sleeves, like your elbows hurt the most or like the inner trench here hurts the most. That's not too bad. What sucks beyond belief is right here. This is just because it's like pure bone. This was a bitch. I did not like this 
do not recommend. I suppose we will now move on to my other arm, um, which is what I call like my more bookish arm. This is like the fancy aesthetic one, this is like the random shit one. So the one we'll start off with is my wrist tattoo, which a lot of people see in all of my photos of my books, which is just a little book. That's this little guy, and uh, actually this is the first time that I went to one of my favorite artists, so she's gonna show up uh, all over my body actually. Her name's Claudia, she's very wonderful, um, and she also did this next one, which is here, Excelsior, which is from King Arthur, and it means onwards and upwards. I love that idea so much, and I love how just having it on my arm to like, when I'm feeling sad, I can like look down on it and be like, ah oh, yes, I'm moving on to greater and better things. Also, don't ever forget that you are a king, yes. Next up on this arm is the one that everybody always comments on, and we are pulling the trigger of Chekhov's gun, and we're talking about my Nessie tattoo. Look at his little nose. It's so cute! I got my Nessie tattoo when I was in Scotland because that seemed like a good souvenir. I have actually visited Lallybroch and auditioned for the role of Claire's daughter on like the second season of Outlander. Didn't get it, but you know, just the fact that I, I was put forward for that role, you know, I, I get it, okay? We are Outlander daughter reborn. But even for this Scottish redhead, there's only so many plaid items of clothing that I can buy, okay? I needed something that like wasn't a scarf. And because I love dinosaurs and folklore and I was already in Scotland, I felt like my little Nessie was apropos. Also, fun fact, it's not actually Loch Ness, it's actually pronounced Loch Nish, so this is Nishi. I've been talking for like 10 minutes, how am I already like out of breath and have a sore throat? What the hell? Moving on to lower down my arm, this is my third Raven Boys tattoo. Oh yeah, Excelsior is like mm, sort of based on that. Um, third Raven Boys tattoo. This is the one that has the best line work out of anything that I have on my body. It is insane the level of detail that this artist got because she only uses single needle. So she's literally taking like, imagine a sewing needle, cut that in half, and then she's drawing on my body with it. But if you know the Raven Boys, this kind of like lopsided triangle is really big and means a lot in the series, but it has to do with ley lines, like magical dream energy paths, and so this symbol is like really big to that magic. That series means so much to me. Does it have its issues? Yes, absolutely. But it also, like, just the way she writes it and just everything about it is, like, old Welsh kings and, like, searching for magic and ley lines and dreams and, like, creation is just- I love it so much. So I have multiple pieces of it on my body. Moving on, this tattoo is from my all-time favorite book. My sword is for The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. This book is about a library that exists outside of space and time, and the only way to get to the library is if it offers you a door. And when it offers you a door, it will give you a motif of three symbols, which are a key, a bee, and a sword. So in here we have the key, the bee, and the sword. Then in the vines here it says Rivera, which the French are screaming. I'm Canadian, you can't speak French to save my life. I have technology specifically for this purpose. Hold on. Rever. Oh, I have, oh no, I can't say that. Rever. Rever. Yeah, no. Rever is going to be the best you got. I'm so sorry. I love that I now always have a key on me to the Starless Sea. And ah, uh, it's so wonderful. This is actually though, this is one of the only tattoos that I regret. And the only reason I say that is because I wish it was bigger. And I also wish I didn't put it here because as you can see, if I bend my arm, the sword bends. So if it's my arm is straight, you have a straight sword. But just like me, it's not quite straight. <laughs> Alright, we are still on this arm, and we're going on to my Latin here. So I did show this off in another video, uh, but this is also by my artist Claudia. This is a quote in Latin from Virgil's Aeneid. I love all the old epic poems, I love Beowulf, I love the Aeneid, I love the Odyssey. And this particular quote <laughs> translates to if I cannot bring down heaven, then I will raise hell. Which, I know, I look like I'm coming from an orange juice commercial, but I love me some Milton and some Dante. I think depictions of hell and depictions of, like, biblical angels are super fascinating. Plus, I'm having a lot of fun telling people that it's a Bible quote. <laughs> I found this quote not actually from the Aeneid, but from a YA book series. Yes, I know, this is from City of Lost Souls, which is the fifth book of the Mortal Instruments series. Sebastian says it, and I was like, oh damn, that's a cool-ass quote when I was reading it at like 17, and then found out later that it was like actually like 
old epic and I was like, oh damn, that's sick as hell. Like, I, I want that on my body. We are still not done this arm. Okay, on to my newest acquisition, which is this snaky friend. I will also warn you, I was gonna film this a couple days ago, didn't, and now it's peeling like crazy. It's not peeling enough to cause alarm in a snake, but it's definitely enough to cause discomfort in a human. I mean, I'm used to it because, you know, I basically do this every other week when I shed my human form. Uh, I mean, it peeled like yesterday, so there's still a little bit on it, but it's not too bad. So this is my space snake. Get a real close this is also from Claudia. Look at the freaking detail that's in here. So it's half the sky and half the stars and like there's some planets in there as well. And also I have some constellations on it mostly for space filler but Gemini is me, Scorpio is my mom, and Capricorn is my dad. I also have named this one too. This one is Jormungandr. All my tattoos that are named are like fairly gendered this one is more like ambiguous, but it's also Norse mythology and like everybody in there switching genders. So like, who cares? If Jormungandr himself wants to come up and correct me, then I will make a formal apology. I also got this one here specifically because I just have this giant empty space. So this is my space filler. Oh, and I almost forgot this one. I, I never see it, so I don't like think about it, which is another reason that I don't ever want tattoos on my back because I'm like, I can't see them so they don't exist. I have a tiny Stars and Stripes tattoo. Um, my family is not affiliated with the military, but our last name is Sergeant. Also, my dad and I have matching uh, Sergeant Stripe tattoos. All right, that is all on my upper body. I don't have any on my ribs or like on my stomach or anything because ow, but I have some on my calves and I have some on my ankles, so I don't know if any of you are expecting or hoping to see my feet today, but mm, that's what's on scheduled programming. Let me adjust this camera. Mm, okay, it's a little crooked, but it'll have to do. I don't have anything weird in the background, do I? I don't think so. So on this leg, I have my spooky deer skull. Also, I didn't shave my legs for this because I didn't want to. Oh, here he is. This is Ikebod. He's one of two tattoos on this leg. Um, I, in case you couldn't tell, have an obsession with... Uh, with bones. But the detail of him is insane. Let me see if I can zoom you guys in. Do you see like in the antlers and like his eye kind of looks like the tree rings? Mm. I wanted to get some mythical creatures on either sides of my calves. So he's the first side. Um, and I also have one on my other ankle that I'll show off in a minute, which is also peeling. But I also have an ankle tattoo on both ankles, so let's show that off. So on this ankle is also the only one that I have in color, uh, and that is my Follow the Green Way tattoo. So this is also book-related surprise, which is maybe one of the OG books that got me into fairies and fairy lore, um, which is The Golden Book of Fairy by O.R. Melling. I remember checking that book out almost every single day of grade eight uh, when I like stumbled across it by accident in my high school library. It just lived at my house. Um, and then I found one on like eBay or something years later, bought it immediately. And the idea with that is like, if you want to go to the fairy realm, then you have to take the low road, you have to go under the mountain, or you take the left path and follow the green way. I don't really want a lot on me in color, but I felt like that one was kind of appropriate. All right, hi, moving on to the other side. On my other leg here, I have my undead hippocampus. Again, let's zoom you guys in. There we go. Look at that guy. He's just started his peeling, so he's not super gross, um, but you might might see a little bit of extra skin. This is the artist that did my sword tattoo uh, named Cass. I think that this is really freaking cool. Like it wasn't exactly what I originally had wanted, but seeing her design was, I was like, oh yeah, oh immediately, like yes, I want that, I want it on my body. So he's kind of undead. Like, that's a theme of basically everything on me. You got some good skeleton action going on over here. And something that actually one of my friends pointed out is that these around it are supposed to be bubbles, but they kind of look like planets. I kind of love the idea of having this like massive eldritch horror undead hippocampus wandering through space at the size that it is that planets are like bubbles to them. That blew my mind. Editing Rachel here. I forgot to mention the name of my newly undead hippocampus. So uh, in the tradition of literary names, I have named this one Rainbow. And he is so named after a character of his same caliber in 
Percy Jackson Sea of Monsters. At the end of this book, Tyson gets a hippocampus named Rainbow. And as the only hippocampi representation in my known media, I thought it'd be fun to do a little homage to Percy Jackson. Oh, by the way, yes, my socks are dinosaurs in love. <laughs> also on this foot, on this ankle, I have my Ask Travars tattoo. Ask Travars is another book thing, as you probably can tell, uh, which comes from A Darker Shade of Magic which is one of my all-time favorite fantasy series uh, about a blood magician who can travel between alternate dimensions that all have varying degrees of magic and as Travars means to travel in their language and that's what he says before he goes dimension hopping. I also got that one when I was in Scotland uh, because V.E. Schwab lives in Scotland so thought that was a fun little uh, homage. So that's everything for now. Let's go back up. So that's everything. As you can see a lot of it's very mythology based, very bookish, which you know did you expect anything less? Now, plans for more, I think is another big thing that everyone's always asking me. I currently have one booked already for the end of August. Um, that's gonna be a moth. I've, oh my gosh, I'm so obsessed with getting a moth tattoo and I finally got a beautiful flash drop from one of my favorite artists. I want a space filler for right here. It was so satisfying to my brain to get the space snake done to like fill in that area. So now my brain's now focusing on like, it's empty. This, you have a sleeve going and it's empty. So I'm thinking maybe like a botanical of some kind. I was thinking like a fern or some flowers. Don't know yet. I do have plans for this arm, which is currently empty. I want to get two specifically on that arm. I want to get a half sleeve of blackberries and I want to get a little fairy creature of some kind. I don't know if I want to get like a fairy prince or if I want to get like a half animal fae creature, but I want to get something that's like peeking out of the blackberries. Sorry, I just gotta readjust you guys because my camera overheated. Now, there is one tattoo that I still, I still really want it even though I know it's like a little controversial in the book community. I no longer support Sarah J Maas. All right, I read all the Throne of Glass books and I've read the first three of her Akotar series. Red Crescent City, hated it. That being said, there are some things in her series that like still really stick with me. I don't want to get the Valoris tattoo. I feel like that's what everybody does. But there is something, if I remember correctly, Reese has tattoos of mountains, I think, either on or above his knees. And the symbolism behind it is that he will not bow to anybody that is not his equal. And then at a point in the series, he like gets down on his knees in front of Feyrod. It's like this most amazing moment of like, he's been lonely for so long and like looking for someone who's his equal. And like, he's finally found somebody that like he's willing to sacrifice everything for us. It's, it's really beautiful. I love that symbolism, but I don't love the idea of it being easily traceable to Sarah J Maas. So I'm thinking maybe like mountains, maybe like um, maybe above my knees because like I also grew up in BC and so like mountains and wildlife are a big part of my life growing up. And then there are just some random book quotes that I think are really cool and I'm like oh maybe if I need like gap fillers I'll use them you know. <laughs> also been kicking around a couple of little creatures so like again more like fairy creatures. I kind of really want a jackalope which are the rabbits with horns which are not real unfortunately. And I'm just saying botanicals are never off the table. I am slowing down now especially that like you know I've gotten most of it on me so I no longer feel that like dread of like oh my god like I need to decorate myself but I definitely need to take a break from getting stabbed repeatedly <laughs> for multiple hours at a time. Because let me tell you I've made this mistake multiple times. Once I got two tattoos within two weeks of each other and I was like well that's a lot. Then I got three tattoos within one week of each other and I was like oh that's a lot don't do that again. And then my last time I got two tattoos one day after the other. <laughs> So, and then I was like, oh, not gonna do that again. So who knows? I apparently have no qualms with breaking my own rules because I have no self-control. <laughs> Please leave down below if you yourself have any tattoos or if you have any bookish tattoos. Cause like, not that I'm looking for any more, but like on the DL, drop them in the comments. I will also link all of the Instagram accounts of my artists in case you happen to be in the Vancouver area or if you happen to live in Scotland. I think that might be fun too, that like everywhere I travel, I get a tattoo and that will be both as like a travel reminder and a fun souvenir that doesn't take up any room in your luggage. Also, uh, my uploads are gonna be a little bit weird in the next couple of weeks because I'm moving and Oh man, oh man, it's a wild process. There is so much paperwork. I thought I'd film like a fun and kind of up-to-date video uh, before we go into like all the packing and I have to take all this down. I'm not looking forward to it. It's gonna be so many boxes. You know where to click the like video. You know where to click the subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are and I will see you all next week. Bye.